I'm pretty sure everyone watching this video already knows it's bad to be in the corner. Obviously, it removes your ability to walk backward, which hurts your capacity to zone. And also, there are certain combos which typically only work on cornered opponents. So why am I making a video about the corner? Because once again, some SF5 system changes affect the way the corner works in ways you might not consider. One of the signatures of SF5 balance is that attacks are bounced around their Okizeme. Certain knockdowns give you the opportunity to pressure your opponent on wake up, even if they quick stand or back roll. The risk reward on this wake up pressure is so good that you'd almost always rather take a weaker combo with good Okizeme. Then a stronger combo with no Okizeme. But the corner can offer the best of both worlds. Alternatively, some combo routes have no opportunity for good Oki at all. Unless the opponent is cornered. I'm sure I don't need to explain just how dangerous Nikali becomes when every uppercut leads to a mix-up. Weak wake-up options have made Okizeme very strong in SF5, so getting Oki has become more potent and avoiding your opponent getting Oki on you has become more necessary. Mathematically, it can be good to get out of the corner early, even if you have to take some damage to do so. So what am I suggesting? This might sound really scrubby, but just jump out of the corner. The idea is the opponent can't generally threaten you with a mix-up unless they're close enough for a throw. And if they're close enough for a throw, then anti-airing this kind of jump is somewhat harder. Especially if they actually did attempt to throw. Even if you actually do get anti-aired, you'll usually only take 100 damage or so max. And you generally flip out of the corner, so it's like taking a little damage to reset your positioning. Of course, you should be mindful, because some characters are better at punishing this than others. So let's talk about the risks of this kind of jump. These are also considerations if your opponent is jumping out of corners against you. First, if the jumper attacks on the way down, they'll be using a cross-up. The nerf to anti-air lights was actually a buff to jump heavy normals, so when you're anti-airing an air medium, you can often use a stand jab or stand strong to win clean, even if it's not normally a great anti-air. If your character has a good dash, you can potentially anti-air them and then dash under the opponent while they reset. This also applies to characters with command dashes. Even if your character has garbage mobility, a jump back normal can anti-air the opponent and keep them in the corner. This option is actually especially good if you have some kind of air combo or air throw. There's also the potential to catch the jumper in their early jump frames. Fundamentally, when jumping out of the corner, you're jumping when the opponent is close enough to threaten a throw mix-up. This means they could also just hit a button and smack you after you stop blocking, but before you leave the ground. Annoying. Of course, you can still try and time the jumps based on the way they move and put on pressure. A good range to watch out for is when they're about this far away. Here, they're too far for a throw mix-up without reactable walking, but if you jump you'll still make it over their head. This range you can jump over them, but there's no pressure on you to do it, which allows you to pick a relatively random time. Unexpected is good here. You can wait for that range even in a block string. For example, here I block twice, and know the opponent is at the ideal range, so I hold up forward. And now I'm out of the corner. And even if they do hit a button and tag you from that far, their attack probably won't lead to a confirm. This corner escape jump works for most characters, but some characters have way better corner escapes which you should probably prioritize first. This includes characters who can convert their combos into side swaps. Looking for a hit you can swap sides from might be better than looking for a chance to jump. It may sound like really bad advice that I'm just adjusting to hold up forward and eat the damage, but I've seen this exact tactic from a lot of really high level players. For example, here's Daigo doing it. 
And here's how Daigo anti aired someone else doing it. Of course, you should try and win neutral so you don't get put in the corner in the first place, but this is just some advice to help you potentially survive longer. People say SF5 has no defensive metagame, but it's there. It's just really different. I'm sure you've heard people say just take a throw, but I've got a new red pill. It can potentially be good to just take the anti-air too.